when we called the Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 900, quote, truly massive, we weren't asking manufacturers to ship us 400 pounds worth of cases. By the time I'd gotten home from our trip to Linus Tech Tips offices, we'd received the Thermaltake View 71, a 42 pound case, the Cooler Master Cosmo C700P, a 58 pound case, and the H500P, which is actually reasonably sized. So rather than posting a video asking if you can judge a case by its weight, we'll be fully reviewing the Thermaltake View 71 for assembly, build quality, thermals, and noise today, and then we'll be moving on to the C700P and H500P shortly hereafter. This video is brought to you by the Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 900 White Edition. The DBP 900 marks a return to full tower cases, equipped with ample hard drive support, effective noise damping foam, high performance fans, and the option to be inverted into an alternative layout. Learn more at the link in the description below. So this is the case. This is the Thermaltake View 71. We'll go through some of the basics here. I'm gonna read through Patrick's notes from the build process, and then we have testing data. Couple of big things. So first of all, it comes with two fans, and they are the ring fans. You can do RGB or you can do single color. We got the blue LED versions, and specifically requested that version for this case because it's cheaper and spending more money for RGB isn't really something that we generally do. So there are two SKUs for this case and one is more expensive and it comes with the rain RGB version of the fans. The fans are positioned bottom front and rear exhaust with this one lining up with the CPU tower coolers and the front kind of just drifting in. Now a couple things here with the interesting ventilation setup with this case. The good and the bad of it is that, well, the good is despite being tempered glass everywhere, like the Corsair 570X that we previously reviewed, it's, I mean, same idea, tempered glass on every single panel except the back. Despite that, Thermal Take has left a pretty large amount of space, about a centimeter or so, on uh, these side panels, including the other side panel, there's space. The front panel, there's a good couple millimeters of space up here, and then the full inch almost dead center. So there's plenty of room for the fans and the ventilation and everything to breathe or draft air in and out, depending on if it's positive or negative pressure. But that also means, depending on if it is positive or negative pressure, you have potential dust concerns, things like that. But that's kind of the give and take of a case that actually tries to have some level of cooling in this instance, while also blocking off every panel with a solid piece of glass. So they've managed to do two things here. They've got glass everywhere and they've got ventilation. That doesn't always go together. So uh, we'll give them that one. The case, I, I mentioned that this fan aligns with the CPU tower cooler and that, I mean, as always, the air will just exhaust out the back. Speaking of the CPU tower cooler though, it might be better to do liquid cooling in this case. I mean, it is thermal take. That's something they tend to do. Even a CLC might be better, and here's why. If you have a tower cooler, even like the one we have, the MSI whatever core or something or other, it's like a $50 cooler. It's not that big. If you have one, and if you want to use the vertical GPU mount, which this includes, there might be a problem for folks who use Gaming X coolers, FTW3 coolers, uh, the Gigabyte Extreme coolers, Zotac Amp Extreme coolers, and, uh, and anything that is a non-reference tall PCB for a video card, there's a lot of them, but anything, anything closer to like the actual size of the slot, the PCIe expansion slot cover, any card that's that size, reference or equivalent, will be fine. But if you use one of the taller cards, then you run into issues where they may, in our case with the Gaming X, they do collide with the CPU cooler. And that's unfortunate. That means you can't really use that vertical mount. So if you're looking at buying this case right now, I'll just tell you, make sure your cooler and your video card will be compatible with the case. And uh, that's easily done with a CLC or with a shorter video card. But just wanted to point that out immediately. They did some cool things with this. So uh, the dust filters are kind of interesting. You just kind of push them and they pop out. Uh, and that makes them easy to clean. You do have to remove the glass and then remove the panel and then you can get the dust filter out. But it's not too hard to remove the panel. You just pull it and then the glass is four screws. Or in this instance, it's two screws and they uh, the back two are ignored and it's replaced with a hinge. So this is actually pretty cool. I like this. 
Uh, hinge door is always a big plus in my books. And when you're building in it, you just kind of do that and that's it. Put it to the side, you're good to go. But it makes it easy to access everything while also doing the tempered glass thing. And uh, it's just better than having the, the four pegs and then having the glass panel fall off the side, which is what every other case on the market does. So going through some of Patrick's notes now, he said that the ring fans look good behind the tinted glass, but the stock one intake, one exhaust doesn't really look great visually, and I agree with that. It performs much better, actually, as we'll show later. So Thermal Take's done some research. They did the optimal configuration, which is better than most manufacturers do. And some of the looks are lost in that configuration, but that's, I mean, you basically got to buy another fan. This is an instance where it may be worth buying a cheaper fan, just some blackout cheap one to put in the rear and then move the two rain fans to the front for your intake. And then you get the better symmetry. Other glass panels we've seen leave little room for ventilation, especially when they have the protective foam pad around the edges. So Thermal Takes got this one figured out by leaving a gap, again, about a centimeter wide, and the filters are still present on the top and front. So more or less covered. This is functional enough for positive pressure setups. Negative pressure will just suck air in through the unfiltered cracks. So we would advise avoiding a negative pressure configuration for this case because dust will be a much bigger issue because of those cracks in the panels, which by design actually work pretty well. You just need to make sure your cooling setup works with them rather than against them. So uh, keep that in mind. The bottom filter is a more standard plastic and mesh type. We do commend thermal take for the extra breathing room around the glass panels, but again, it's just, you're gonna make use of those filters, bottom, front, top, all of them. And overall, it's what we like to see with the right tuning. It's just the user has to do some tuning too. A positive pressure setup while helping to avoid dust where you don't want it will also force air out of the gaps. So we did find that sometimes the GPU has peculiar cooling performance, depending on which card and how it's set up because some of your air from the front intake may be escaping the case before it ever makes its way to the video card. So again, give and take everywhere, but you can optimize it and it'll work fine. Potential buyers should keep in mind that the size of this case means it can fit three 120 millimeter fans in the front, but not three 140s, which is the size that's included. So even with the more expensive RGB edition, you're gonna end up either needing to buy another rain RGB pack if you'd rather have the three front fans, or just stick with two in the front and then deal with it for the rest of the intake and exhaust positions. The interior of the case is spacious, especially behind the motherboard. We really noticed this, and there's plenty of place to route the cables, places to move everything around and work with the system overall. The backside being that it is tinted glass and that there is space for cable routing really demands sleeved cables, maybe something like from Cable Mod or Corsair or any of the other Silverstone, some kind of sleeve cable solution would look a lot better in this case than in most with the blackout panel, uh, as both are translucent. And there's no power supply shroud in this case to hide the loose ends. Some negative user reviews point out that although this case is technically capable of holding EATX boards, they make the cable cutouts and rubber grommets inaccessible. So this is a downside to the case in addition to the one or two we've already pointed out. So if you want to do EATX, you're somewhat out of luck with managing the cables cleanly. You can work with it. You'll probably end up sending them through the drive cages though instead. So uh, given that this is a larger case, it'd be nice to see the extra half inch or so of give for the cables with EATX. Special features include the ability to mount the GPU vertically and mount a radiator sideways inside the case. The vertical GPU mount is undercut again by the fact that the, well actually a different fact here other than the tower coolers, also, there's no PCIe riser cable included, and at $170, you kind of wish that they did include one. Now, of course, that increases cost a bit, but Thermaltake includes it with $100 P3 cases, which are admittedly far less costly to make in terms of material cost, but still, this case kind of demands one, and it, you can buy one yourself, but just make sure you buy the Thermaltake PCIe riser cable because you need that one. We had a generic PCIe riser cable and it didn't fit the mounting holes. So we ended up making do with a hand-me-down from the Core P3. Even then we had a few tricks to play because it's best again to use with either a CLC or smaller tower cooler. We had to make judicious use of twist ties here and basically tie the video card to the 
cables and the cooler and things like that to test the thing vertically oriented because of the clearance issues. As for the radiator mount, that works much the same way as it does in the Core P3. The hard drive cages can be removed and up to a 420 radiator can be mounted in their place, making the fans fully visible from the side of the case. This actually looks pretty damn good. It's not optimal for airflow, and it's, well, it's definitely suboptimal for airflow, but it looks good. So if you're okay with doing an open loop configuration, knowing that you have the thermal headroom to play and reduce the optimization of your loop, you can make it look pretty damn cool by doing that. But it's just down to whether or not you want the looks or the function. A problem that every glass side panel case needs to address though is how to keep users from promptly breaking it. Five millimeter thick glass is heavy and right now it's also expensive. We praised the Thermaltake's Core G21TG for its oddly angled feet, which double as supports, but the View 71, again, it goes a step further with the hinges so that they're easy to remove. The only real trouble with construction overall was that somehow nearly every screw, side panels, top and front, seemed to be cross-threaded or easily cross-threaded, basically crooked after a couple of days of assembly and disassembly, and this isn't just us. Users building in this case pointed out the same problem online in user reviews, just be very careful about adding those screws in there uh, and there's maybe not a lot you can do other than that. As for other accessories, the rubber PSU supports are in the bag of accessories and they need to be stuck in the case before the power supply is installed. Additionally, the rubber feet on the bottom of the case left some light stains on our ESD mat. So be careful of where it's placed. I mean, we can. some of this is from thermal paste and some of it's from the feet, but I mean, right now I'm looking, I can see that the case was positioned here previously. I can see that it was positioned here previously. Uh, and actually I can see them here. They're pretty damn visible. And you can kind of scrub it off for the most part, but it's one of those things where if, if you went and put this on a wood floor, you'd probably be pissed off. So uh, keep that in mind. I'm not sure if it's to do with the material. It's just kind of a rubberized foot. So, I don't know, you can wash it off. Just, uh, if it's there for years, it might stain though. So keep that in mind, maybe put some kind of small something underneath it. Maybe scrub off a layer of the foot if you're putting it on a wood floor. But uh, those are the all the positives and all the negatives of the build. Let's go through the thermals and the noise. As always, we ran our basic thermal test in the complete stock configuration, and then we did some additional tests for this case specifically, one of which was the vertical GPU orientation. Another was relocating this rain fan to the front because it seems like something a user would do. It looks better that way, but not adding a fan in its place. We also tested having two front fans, both rain, and then adding a rear fan in its place. So that also seems like something a user would do. And that was a 140 millimeter knock to a AF14 or whatever it is. So uh, pretty good balance overall for testing. Then we have comparative tests as always. And keep in mind that the VU71 doesn't have the airflow of a normal case. So some of the numbers look a little funny sometimes, but when you start thinking about it, it makes sense. Uh, with the video card pushed up against the glass panel, for example, the GPU will get warmer, but the CPU cools down. The reason for that is because you're now removing, in the case of our tower cooler CPU, you're removing this video card that's just a giant, not only a, it's more like a firewall than anything, except it's a firewall that's got a fire behind it because the back plate of the GPU is radiating 80 to 90 C of heat off the back of the card and that goes where? Into the CPU cooler. So some interesting numbers because of those, uh, the orientation options and because of the gap around the panels on every side, but uh, pretty fun to test for that reason. Starting with the torture CPU test with only the Thermaltake View 71 results, moving the exhaust fan to the front raised the CPU delta a bit to 56.2 Celsius, and the exhaust slot is adjacent to the CPU cooler that directly benefits it. So once again, where the intake slot is further away and unobstructed from the hard drive cages, the exhaust is closer to the heat zones and air kind of gets trapped back there. So is also free to exit anywhere in the case on its way to the video card and the CPU through all of the ventilation and the side gaps. So it's not just the back that the air comes out. 
and a lack of exhaust for the radiative heat off of the GPU backplate doesn't help either. Adding a third fan into the vacant exhaust slot while keeping the two rain fans in the front was predictably cooler than either of the first two options with a 54 degrees Celsius delta. Moving the GPU vertically with just the stock fans did best of all at 49.6 delta T for CPU temperature and incoming air was no longer trapped under the GPU and the backplate moved farther from the CPU tower cooler. Makes sense. Comparatively, 54.7 degrees Celsius delta T is decent for a glass plated case with only two fans. Much of this is due to their quality. We keep case fans at 100% during testing and the ring fans included consistently ran between 1400 and 1500 RPM. They're not the best fans on the market in terms of static pressure, but they're a far cry better than what a lot of the manufacturers include in their cases, except maybe the likes of someone like Be Quiet who use their really quite good fans in their Dark Base Pro 900 or cases like that. Far cry better though than what Thermaltake used in the G21 that we reviewed recently. Installing the 1500 to 1600 RPM knock to a fan on the rear, place the View 71 between the stock Mesh Phi C and the Core P3, both of which are significantly more open air oriented in the front. The 570X is a direct competitor for the tons of glass market, but it does ship with three 120 millimeter fans compared to the View 71's two 140s. Moving to GPU torture test results and starting again with the View 71 only, then moving to comparatives. With an intake fan pushing cool air directly along the bottom of the case and with no power supply shroud to sink everything, the GPU temperature delta was 51.5 Celsius over ambient. Many cases that ship with two fans try to split incoming air between the CPU and the GPU, but Thermaltake is relying on some passive drafting of air and also relying on the CPU tower cooler to pull air from the bottom intake and toward it. Or if you're using a CLC, then substitute those words. Primarily from a visual standpoint, we'd like to see both rain fans in the front for this case, but with a cheaper blackout fan for the exhaust, you'd be in good shape, both visually and in terms of thermals. Moving the exhaust fan forward raises the GPU delta temperature just as it does for the CPU, and that's because the heat getting trapped from the backplate of the GPU and from the CPU exhaust is having trouble getting out of the case. It's getting trapped up there in the back corner. It's getting trapped between the glass panel and it needs help exhausting everything once it's generated all that heat and has nowhere to go. The extra knock to a fan in the rear scored the lowest delta of 48.7 Celsius where the air pressure pulled some air from around the side panels and overall case with airflow this complex requires some experimentation to find the best fan configuration for your build. So you'll want to do testing on a per build basis. But the worst one overall that we tested for GPU thermals was easily the vertical GPU mount at 65.5 Celsius delta T over ambient. The setup would work much better with liquid cooling on the GPU especially, but with a fully air-cooled system, horizontal GPU mounting is the way to go, at least in this enclosure with this setup. The issue of CPU tower cooler clearance for tall cards plays into this as well, but reference size PCBs will be fine, and that's generally what you use for open loop cooling anyway. Comparatively on GPU torture thermals, 51.5 degrees Celsius is already a respectable GPU temperature delta over ambient, comparable to the Corsair 570X and the 270R, and 48.7 Celsius delta T is better than anything on our chart except for the RL06. This is partly combined from all the ventilation holes everywhere, but the rain fans allow the GPU to breathe in a way that many other cases have struggled with. 3 d Mark Firestrike places the Thermaltake View 71 at a GPU temperature of 53.7 Celsius Delta T over ambient. The Silverstone KL07 and Core P3 both do well here, with the P3 effectively serving as an open air bench. In a more real world test using Blender, both the CPU and GPU did well overall. 37.3 Celsius CPU Delta T when rendering on the CPU is again exactly the same as the Core P3. And then rendering on the GPU, we had a 26.1 Celsius Delta T temperature for the video card, which is below most cases besides the RL06. The View 71 doesn't have any trouble coping with a normal workload without the extra fans included. Looking at noise levels, the Thermaltake View 71 operates at 41.2 dBA, positioning it as imperceptibly quieter than the Corsair 570X and the RL06, both at 43 dBA. The Fractal Meshify C operates a noise level of 38.6 dBA in its stock configuration, functionally identical to the S340 Elite at 1300 RPM. As for other large cases, the Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 900 sits at 34.4 dBA stock 
as Be Quiet opted to more heavily focus on noise suppression with a mix of cooling rather than anything else really. Seeing all of this data, Thermal Take's View 71 is actually pretty impressive on the thermal front. The only place it really has a pitfall is when the GPU is vertically mounted and in the initial CPU test chart where the 570X outperforms the View 71 a bit. But once we're looking at other charts like 3D Mark, like the GPU test for the View 71, Blender, it is either chart topping or very nearly chart topping in all of those. So they've done well with the thermals. With the noise, eh, it's not exciting, but I mean, it's, that's what you get when something is a bit better thermally. You get worse noise almost always. So that's the trade-off you're making. But in terms of thermals, it's looking pretty good. So that wraps it up. As for whether you like this case or not, I think it basically entirely comes down to the looks. Thermally, it's fine. There's really nothing that wrong with it unless you vertically mount an air-cooled GPU and you're not doing anything to deal with the heat. Maybe a blower fan would do better, but with the axial fans, you're just spitting hot air all over the inside of the glass. It's got nowhere to go. It's just heating up the video card. But other than that, it does fine thermally. Noise, yeah, it's a bit louder. You can lower the fan RPM. It'll still be fine thermally and it'll be obviously quieter, but you really can't do much to stop noise when there's holes in all the panels by design for ventilation. So this competes directly with the 570X. They're about the same price. At the time of writing this, they are about $170 on Newegg, uh, depending on whether or not you count a $10 rebate for the 570X. So basically the same price. Adding a fan makes this case a lot better, but it's not necessary. There are a couple small things, a couple big things that Thermal Takes overlooked. The EATX support, for example, aligning with the rubber grommets or just the pass-throughs in general was one of the bigger ones. Uh, colliding with tower coolers with taller video cards vertically mounted is one of the bigger ones. You can work around all of these issues if you're building the system from scratch. It's pretty easy to get around them as long as you know they exist. But, uh, I mean, as for the rest, it's really just up to you. Do you like glass on every panel or not? Yes or no. If yes, then look at this case. Look at the 570X, the 460X, and uh, there's a couple others on the market. We would, if you, if you would rather have just like one glass panel like this one, and you don't need glass everywhere else, then we would recommend looking at the Bit Phoenix Shogun. That's kind of hit and miss with a lot of people. Uh, the what the 805 and when 805 is not a bad one to consider as well it's more looks oriented the 303 is a pretty cool case and that is also more looks oriented needs some help on the cooling but yeah i think that pretty much lays it out for you so as always thank you for watching you can help us out directly on patreon.com slash gamers nexus or just subscribe for more to catch the next video go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one and i'll see you all next time when there's holes in all the panels by...